Okay, metric outside micrometers. As you can see, we have different sizes here, and these micrometers come in 25 millimeter ranges. So this would be like a zero to 25 millimeter micrometer, a um, 75 to 100 millimeter micrometer, and a 125 to 150 millimeter micrometer. But even though these ranges change, the scale readings all work the same. What I'd like to show you is the different parts of the micrometer and the scale readings. So let me flip it over here and you can see we have what they call the anvil here. This would be the spindle, thimble, and sleeve. So on the thimble we have increments of one hundredth of a millimeter. So if I move this thimble one line, I've actually moved this spindle one hundredth of a millimeter. And then we have the markings on the sleeve, which represent up on the top of the line here, we have represented whole millimeters, and the bottom of the line, fifty hundredths of a millimeter. This is counting the amount of times that we've made full revolutions on the thimble because each full revolution is fifty hundredths of a millimeter. So let's bring this around and take a reading and this particular reading would be four because I have four whole four lines showing here so that's four whole millimeters. Notice that I have a space between this line and the thimble so right now my reading is four and fifty hundredths of a millimeter. If I rotate this further, opening up further, and I believe I have the five lined up there. Just a second. So I've actually gone five hundredths of a millimeter further from that four and fifty hundredths so my reading would be four and fifty-five hundredths. So each of these little lines is equal to one hundredth of a millimeter. And I'll come around one more time just to show you a full revolution. And now I have five whole millimeters showing. So hundredths of a millimeter, whole millimeters, fifty hundredths of a millimeter. These lines count the number of times that we've made full revolutions with the thimble. All right, I'm going to use the outside metric micrometer to measure a piston. Now, the first thing that I want to do here is check this micrometer and make sure that it is zeroed. So I have a standard that is exactly 75 millimeters and zero one hundredths. I'm going to run this down. Sorry, I didn't do that earlier. And wipe my measuring faces, make sure they're clean. Spindle, anvil, wipe off my standard, make sure that it's clean. And I'll set the standard inside the micrometer, holding the plastic shield so my body heat doesn't transfer. Make sure that this instrument is correct. I can see that my micrometer is zeroed, so I'll be getting accurate measurements when I measure the piston. I'm going to run the thimble back out. because I know that this piston is larger than 75 millimeters. And I'd previously marked my piston at 6 millimeters on the skirt so that I have my proper measuring position and that's for this particular piston. Different pistons have different depths. If, uh, if it's not given out then a good rule of thumb is uh, 10 millimeters down. But this is specified. So I'm going to put my piston inside the micrometer, slowly ease down, 
and make my measurement. Make sure that I'm at the widest point by feeling it. And you'll notice that I'm not using the ratchet stop because in some measurements using the ratchet stop are going to cause you uh, to have incorrect readings. The particular measurement for this piston would be 98 whole millimeters because if I read my lines above the datum line I have 95, 96, 97, and 98 whole millimeters. Down on the bottom I have a 50 hundredths millimeter line showing and then on my thimble I have 48 hundredths of a millimeter showing. So that would be 98 and 50 hundredths plus 48 hundredths so it would be 98 and 98 hundredths of a millimeter. 